Uh, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 6. The same book of Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, we know the Lord has been speaking to us from here for some two, three weeks now. But let's speak this today. After the work of consecration that the Lord, that uh, Isaiah allowed God to do in his life, uh, as we saw last week, after laying everything down in humility before the Lord, and the Lord commanded an angel to take a hot coal with fire from the altar to touch his mouth, to touch him at the very point of his need, that aspect of his life that the Lord needed to transform. Just the way we said last week that all of us, we will always have, as long as we are here, areas of our lives that the Lord will need to continue to transform until we become exactly like him. And that every encounter God gives us is actually meant to bring a transformation in our lives. It's meant to do a divine work, an eternal work in us, just like he did to Isaiah. After that experience, then from verse 8 of chapter 6 of Isaiah, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell these people. Go and tell these people. This morning, I want to focus on a short message, I hope, which I would like to tie to when the Lord says go, when the Lord says go, <laughs> hallelujah. When the Lord tells a man or a woman go, what are the implications of that? What does he mean by that? What challenge, what encouragement can we draw from that when the Lord says, go? That's what we're looking at this morning. The first thing I want to tell us is this. When God says, go, he meant go. <laughs> Hallelujah. You didn't get that point. So he's not just wasting words. Whatever God tells you, he actually means it. He meant to say exactly what he has said. And go seems to be a very simple word. But it's a word that is loaded with great power is a word that is loaded with great blessings that we will need to understand spiritually. But I can assure you that not many of us actually understand the word go from God. In literal use of language, when you say go, even children know what it means to go. But spiritually, we don't seem to understand the full force of that word. Now, 
Here we are seeing God telling Isaiah, as soon as Isaiah offered himself, the Lord said to him, go. Go. And then give him a message. We'll come to the message later. But the first thing we are seeing here is that God told him to go. Go. Turn with me as we explore this together this morning. When the law says go, we're going to take it from the Old Testament, take it to the New Testament, and see what the implication of that is. Turn with me to Judges chapter 6. The book of Judges chapter 6. In Judges chapter 6, Did I say judges? Yes. Oh, sorry. I mean Joshua. Uh, in Judges chapter six. Yes. Give me one moment. Yes, Judges chapter six. <clears throat> in that encounter that Gideon had with the Lord, another encounter, another encounter that Gideon had with the Lord. We won't go into all the story, but we just want to take it from verse 14 of that passage. And for verse 14 says, then the Lord turned to him, that is turned to Gideon, and said, go in thy might, or in this thy might, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianite as one man. Then he said to him, if now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talks with me. That's where we are going to stop. The word go from word, uh, from the Lord means ascending, isn't it? Obvious. Is that not obvious? God told him, go. In this your mind. Have I not, have I not sent you? So the word go from the Lord means being sent. It's a word of commissioning. When the Lord tells a man, go, go, it means he has sent you. It means you are being sent to do something. You are being sent to accomplish something on behalf of God. That looks very obvious, isn't it, is it not? But we do need to understand that. When you maybe you are praying and the Lord says, go. It shows that he himself is sending you. Maybe you read a passage in the scriptures, some of which we will look at, where you say, where God says, go, or you hear the Lord Jesus Christ saying, go. On the authority of that word, go, know that you are sent. Know that you are not going on your own authority. Know that you are not going by yourself. You are going on the ground of a man sent. You are going, <laughs> let me quickly expand this. You are going, <laughs> oh, you are going as an apostle. I'm not saying as a title. I'm not using that word as a title. 
Now that am I using that word to lower the office of an apostle? No. I recognize the office of an apostle. I recognize the apostolic office in the body. But any man who can hear go from the Lord is a saint man. And a saint man, actually, in the use of the word, in the use of the word, is actually what it means to be apostolic. Like I said last week, God is building and raising not just men into the office of an apostle, or, or, you know, apostles, but God is actually raising an apostolic people. That must, that must be something you need to grasp. God is not raising few men to occupy the office of apostles. God is actually interested at this hour in his plans and purpose to raise an apostolic people. A people who understand that they are sent of God. Whether they are in business, they know they are sent there by God. That's what it means to be apostolic. You understand that you are where you are on a mission. You are, in a sense, a missionary. Because the Latin word is missio. You are, on a, you are on a mission. Until we get that right, we are never going to be able to perform well. When God says, go to a man or to a people, God has sent them. And because he's sending them with a message on a mission, they are missionaries. Because he's sending them, they are apostolic. Amen. We must move beyond just a few people occupying frontline offices in the kingdom to a company of people understanding their calling and fulfilling the work of the ministry together. If you are an apostle, your, your assignment is to raise an apostolic people. If you are a prophet, your assignment is to raise a prophetic people. Amen. It's about discipling people into your me into 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 the work of service in that area of your own office. Are you following me? Just as if you are a doctor for teaching medical students, you are preparing doctors. Is that not what it means? Because we have to take things beyond where it had been left for a while. Where we all dance around ministerial offices, where you ask people, when people ask you, uh, what is my ministry? What is my ministry? They are looking at either they are a prophet, they are apostle, they are evangelists, they are pastors, they are teachers. Usually, most people, that's what they concentrate on. But let me quickly tell you, that God is raising an apostolic people. I can, I, can, I, can, I can continue on this till the end of this message, but it has to occur to us. It has to be done in our heart that God is raising you and I to be an apostolic people, a people sent. And that's what the word go, the first implication of the word go 
peaks. Is this point I'm making clear? Then if you look at that judges, you will see that another implication of that is this. So he said to him, okay. So he said to him, oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you. When the Lord says go, it is an assurance and a guarantee of divine backing and divine presence. When God tells a man go, know that the, the whole of heaven is backing you up. In whatever the assignment is, in whatever he has asked you to do, the whole of heaven is backing you up. There's a divine backing for you. There is God's backing for you. Go with God means you are sent to, you are backed up from above. The assignment may look challenging. The environment may look difficult. The situation may not even look possible to you. But no, on the account of the word go, you have the backing of God. Is someone getting me? You want to go into a business, for instance, and you pray, and the Lord said, go ahead. That word go in it. It's not just saying go and do whatever you want to do. No. If it is a true goal from God, <laughs> you have the backing of God. The issue about your limitation, the issue about your weaknesses, the issue of the things you can do or cannot do, your background, they count very little, if at all, because you are backed up by God. It's an assurance of divine backing. I may approach this message from another angle another day. But today, these few words, I want, I want them to register in our heart. God has already taken into account all the excuses that you have, all the things that you think will hinder you from doing what he has sent you to do. You are sent and you are backed up. Amen. And I can hear God telling a number of us today, saying, go. Go ahead. Go. You have a big dream, a big vision of the things God wants you to do. He says, go. And be assured that I'm the one sending you. They say, what go for somebody today? Go. And he said, Look at it there. Have I not sent you? Um, yes. Have I not sent you? And look at what happened next. It says, surely I will be with you. Divine presence. Divine backing and divine presence. The presence of God will always accompany a man sent by God. Anyone sent by God can be guaranteed, can be assured of divine presence. You are not alone. You are not going to walk alone. Brothers and sisters, God is with us. God is with you. 
if you can hear the voice of the Lord say, go, God is with you. And there's something, these two words, divine backing and the assurance of divine presence, there's something they do to us, these two words. And that is to eliminate fear. That is to remove fear. Fear of, fear of failure. Every fear related to your inadequacies. Hallelujah. Isaiah may have, might have had all his own weaknesses, but the moment the Lord said, go, that settled it. And may the Lord give us understanding of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at the next thing that happened there. And you, surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianite as one man. It's also an assurance of divine empowerment, divine endowment for success. Any man God sends is guaranteed success. If they understand these little, little principles we are establishing today. The reason I'm saying this is this. After several of us will have encountered God in different ways, which I'm sure has been happening. And as we lay ourselves down before him, like Isaiah did, I can hear him say, go. 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 And you can then be rest assured in your mind that that is a word that guarantees success. The word go from God. Guarantees success. Guarantees victory. And that's why it's always, it's always good to be sure I'm, I'm, I'm making it a bit, a bit more, let me bring it to our levels now. In whatever you want to do, make sure you hear the word of, the voice of God saying go. Bring it before the Lord. You know David. I can't talk about David today, but I'll talk about him another day. He was fond of saying, God, shall I go to? And the moment that God, God says, go, he knew he could expect the impossible to become possible there. On that authority of just go, As a people, don't jump into anything. Don't jump into places without asking the Lord. Because as an ambassador, you must know where to go. <laughs> you must know what he's sending you into. But the moment he says go, and it's not difficult to hear go from the Lord. Go. Be sure that you will succeed. Be sure that you will prosper there. Be sure that you have victory there. It doesn't matter the forces around. It doesn't matter the challenges around. Be rest assured that success is guaranteed. You don't have to be intimidated. You don't have to feel intimidated by the things you are saying or the happenings around you. Because go from the Lord is a word of empowerment. It shows that he has empowered you, he has endued you. Hallelujah. Amen. In fact, he said you will defeat the Midian as one man. As part of that empowerment is that the job will be easier for you than you are thinking. It will be so, it will be so much easier than you have thought. And today I'm seeing men and women who God 
has already prepared. I'm seeing the people who God has raised in the secret places. I'm seeing the people to whom God is saying, go. Go. Hallelujah. Go. If God tells you go, please, better go. Because it really meant go. It doesn't matter how great the vision before you is. And I'm trusting the Lord that someone will just hear the voice of the Lord today say, go. Go. I remember when I was uh, uh, younger and uh, much younger than this, and I had just finished from the medical school, and I had the voice of the Lord saying, go go to a part of Nigeria where things are not as, uh, as settled as they are in the part where I grew up, where I was raised. And I knew I had the conviction of the Lord saying, go. Then I remember my mom had a little issue with that. She wasn't discouraging me, but as a mother, she had to say what she needed to say well. But I remember my earthly dad saying, go. My earthly dad, echoing the voice of the Lord, say go. Do you know that on the authority of that, I have so much confidence? I'd already had my heavenly dad, and my earthly dad seemed to be echoing the same. <laughs> Hallelujah. And once he said it, I knew I had to go. I knew nothing would happen to me. And to make you aware, that same year, there was a big commotion in that part of the country. But because everyone said go, I knew that was not going to be my end. Brothers and sisters, the assignment before us is great. And I don't really know into what God will be sending you. It may be into a, an assignment in, the, in, in, in a particular area. It may be in a profession. And for young people who are listening to me, you don't have to fear anything. All you need to do to know is the assurance of the word go from the Lord. Dream big. Has God to give you great vision and go on the authority of the word go. Have I not sent you? Your weaknesses will not count, your limitations will not count. Because I've told us everything surrounding us, they are spiritual. You are simply a spiritual man sent into those areas. It may be a business, it may be a project. And once you hear the Lord go, just know that that business is no longer your own, it is of the Lord, it's a mission field. It's no longer a secular work, it's a mission field. The word go transforms everything you are doing and everything he wants you to do or you have planned to do, and he has given his back in tow into a mission field, into a mission work. And all you will need to be asking yourself is, how do I glorify him here? Because you are now a saint man, a saint woman. Amen. And this is something I had always prayed for concerning many Christian politicians that hope that they will understand the word go. Hope that they will have heard the word go before going ahead in the first instance. And if they have heard the Lord saying go, hope that they will understand that you are actually sent into a mission field. 
that is the essence of me talking about an apostolic people. Because it's easier for somebody to say, oh, God has asked me to go and do a missionary work among the Kimberis in, <laughs> I don't know where, <laughs> whatever you want to call them. Are you getting what I'm talking about? It's easier to quickly attribute that to a spiritual work. But what if the word go is into the political terrain? What if the word go is into the marketplace? Are you following me? Can we also attribute that to a mission field? Because not everyone will go to the villages. There are those who will be positioned in political arena to be missionary there, to be ambassadors there. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Isaiah 52. Isaiah chapter 52. When the Lord says go. When the Lord says go. Isaiah 52. In Isaiah 52, there's an interesting verse there, which you must have heard me use in praying, especially when sending our youth forth into the higher institutions. I might have used it a number of times, but I will take the reading from verse 11. Depart, depart, go out from there, touch no unclean thing, Isaiah 52. Go out from the midst of her, be clean. You who bear the vessels of the Lord. That's the consecration we are talking about, isn't it? Being set apart. Being separated unto the Lord. From things that contaminate, from things that pollute. Any man who must be sent must consecrate. That's just what that is saying. There are things to separate yourself from. There are things you must willingly surrender yourself to the Lord for and be set apart for him as a holy vessel for holy purposes. That we said last week. But look at the next thing. For you will not go out with haste, nor go by flight. You will not go out in a hurry. You will not go out as somebody being chased. That's the importance of hearing the word go. But look at what he said next. He said, for the Lord will go before you. And the glory of God of Israel will be your rear guard. When the Lord says go, know that he has gone ahead of you. Know that he has already gone ahead of you. Into whatever God is sending the man, God himself has already gone ahead. Whatever God sends you to go and do, God himself is already ahead of you. John 10 verse 4 says, when he puts forth his own, he goes before them. And when he goes before a man, do you know what happens? He makes the crooked ways straight. It breaks the gates open. God himself is at the head. I'll show you two scriptures just now. Isaiah 45. Today is just a day of encouragement because I know God is telling someone, go. Go ahead. I have sent you. Go. Heaven is backing you up. My presence is with you. And know also that I've already gone ahead of you. The job is already done. You are just to go and harvest what God has already done. God will be sending us to win souls. God will be sending us to speak to people. And when he says go, know that he has already gone ahead. 
But look at what happened when God says go to a man. When God goes ahead of a man, Isaiah 45. Thus says the Lord from verse 1, to his, upon, to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him, and loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors, so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who called you by your name, I am the God of Israel. Do you see what it means for the Lord to go before a man? Have you seen that here? It prepares the way. It makes a way where there is no way. It breaks barriers down. It removes everything that could limit. When the Lord says go, know that there is an open door ahead of you. Know clearly that you, that you have an open door ahead of you. Hallelujah. The obstacles, God will deal with them. The barriers, God will take care of them. Maybe one day I'll be talking about the privileges of being sent. But today, I'm just looking at what this word go means. It simply means God himself has gone ahead of you. And when he has gone ahead of a man, he removes obstacles. He removes barriers. He makes a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. I'm not going to deal with that last bit, which says, <laughs> I'm going to give you the treasures in darkness. That's for another day. But just know that when God goes ahead of a man, there is something he has already done. He has gone, he has removed obstacles for you. For young people, in your dreams and ambition that comes from the Lord, to which I'm giving you the word, go ahead, go, on behalf of the Lord. The obstacles Amen. are removed. Amen. The limitations are removed. Amen. You can only expect breakthroughs, Amen. successes, Amen. victories Amen. in all your endeavors. For the Lord has gone ahead of you. And for the older people amongst us, whatever that mission is, that you are sensing in your heart right now, and God is saying, go. Go ahead. Know that the job is done. Amen. The work is done. I hope someone is hearing the voice of the Lord this morning. Go. Turn with me to the to the book of Micah. To the book of Micah. There is a word there that is interesting. And I'm sure you've seen it before, you've read it before. Someone to read for me, if you can read, verse 13, verse 13. Micah chapter 2, verse 13. I'm still emphasizing this issue of the Lord going before you, because that means a lot. God is leading us into great things this year. Amen. God is leading us, is sending us as ambassadors into great things this year. Amen. And I want you to raise your expectations. 
you will find yourself in places you will think you are out of your debt, but know that God has already gone ahead of you. 4.13, Pastor. Yeah, 2.13. 2.13, sorry. The one who breaks open, the one who breaks open the way will go up before them. They will break through the gates and go out. Their king will pass through before them, the Lord at their head. Can you see that? The one who breaks open, the way maker, will come up before them. He will make a way for them. They will break out. They will have breakthrough. They will pass through gates that will have been barriers. And they go out by it. The king himself will be before them. The Lord of hosts himself as their head, as their leader. Brothers, as a church, the great mission ahead of us this year and in the years ahead, I see the breaker. <laughs> oh, going before us. Breaking open the gates. I see the Lord himself ahead of us. I'm more encouraged even I'm, as I'm speaking to you now. Amen. I'm encouraged of great things that the Lord will do. For I see the breaker, the one who breaks open, Amen. the one who makes a way going ahead of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I can hear the word go in my heart. I can hear it. Go. And, I'm, and I hope you are hearing it as a person. Amen. Go. Yeah. And as I conclude, I thought I could go into the New Testament today, but I have to conclude somewhere here. Let's just focus around this. Let's go back to that Isaiah 52. And I will conclude there today. In Isaiah 52, Of course, he said, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. He has your back. <laughs> you don't need to keep on looking at, watching your back. He has your back. <laughs> he has your back. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Whatever that means to you, it will be your rear guard. Amen. Yeah. will go before you, he will cover you from behind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And look at it. Behold my servant, the one whom I have sent, because a man sent by God is a servant of God. Isn't it? My servant shall deal prudently with wisdom. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Don't say, oh, he's just talking about Jesus. Whatever applies to him applies to us. So just take note of that. It will be extolled. It will be exalted. Yeah. It will not be put to shame. If anything, if you expect anything, you should expect exaltation. You should expect honor and not disgrace and not shame. The wisdom of God will be available for you when the Lord says go. When the Lord says go, he's sending you into a place of glorification, into a place where you will glorify him and you will be glorified in him. Amen. And the necessary wisdom 
will be bestowed on you. You won't lack anything you need to succeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of my time, I'm going to stop here. When the Lord says, go. It means he's sending you. Welcome now, why you? It means his presence is going to go with you. Amen. It means the whole heaven is backing you up. It means you're already equipped to succeed in the mission. It means he has gone ahead of you to prepare the way. And if there's anything you have to expect, you can only expect victory, you can only expect glory, and not defeat, and not shame. Bow down your hairs as we pray together this morning. Talk to me. Just, just thank God for this morning. Thank God for this morning. If you haven't heard the word go from the Lord, go back to the Lord. He will tell you things to go into. God is already sending you into very specific things. And for us together, collectively, God is sending us into something. Pray that the Lord will open your ears to hear his voice. To hear what I usually call the go command. And into what it's sending you into. Young people, listening to the Lord. In the pursuit of your career, God is saying something to you. He's saying, go in this area. Go in that direction. It's nothing too big. Nothing too great to send you into. No mission too big to accomplish. No height too great to attain. Go. Go. He has not prepared us for nothing. He didn't prepare Isaiah for nothing. Isaiah's consecration was not for nothing. It was something great. And so, Father, this morning we want to say thank you for sending your word to us. Thank you, Lord, for taking your time to prepare us. Some of us for years and years. When we didn't even know what you were preparing us for. But Father, I can hear your voice from above saying go. Father, I just pray that each and every one of us will go in the strength and the authority of this world in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, we are praying that this world will empower our heart. This world, oh God, will make us strong from within. Father, thank you for the guarantee of victory and success. Mm -hmm even as we go through this year and the years ahead as ambassadors, as missionaries, and as your apostolic people. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Amen.